I'm writing to share the information of your birth family. As you may be aware, your birth parents were married. They have one son and they have a daughter. You may also find that your brother Ji Seong is actually your twin brother. What? This is the moment that changed everything. How would you process meeting your identical twin brother for the very first time? So for those of you that didn't get a chance to watch the documentary in 2013, I had a really amazing experience going back to Korea. I was able to meet my biological family, including an identical twin brother that I never knew about. It was a really, really, really remarkable experience, something that I never thought was ever going to happen. I think in making the documentary, we had no idea what it was going to do. It was really just kind of a, a, a project that we all felt really passionate about. And I had no idea that it was gonna get as much exposure as it did. So since everything came out, I can definitely say that my life has taken a very interesting turn. But even beyond that, I'm really fortunate that a lot of people were able to see the documentary. There's a lot of people that are able to relate to it just because we come from like weird family situations. There's a lot of people that I've been meeting that maybe they're not necessarily adopted, but they're living with their aunt or their uncle. So it's been really amazing being able to hear stories from so many different people around the country. Since the end of the documentary, things have definitely changed a lot in my life. And I think that the last three years have really been me trying to process what that means. And I'll be honest, I haven't even really processed what that means since we got back from Korea. I do a Skype call with my biological mom and father maybe once every like three or four months. Uh, and that's not a lot, but it's still like something. I know that there's not a lot of adoptees that have the opportunity that once they meet, it's kind of like they do it and then it kind of fades away after a little bit. Typically, if I ever want to do a Skype conversation or be able to communicate with my biological family, I kind of need help from a friend. I don't really know the language at all. And so, even though it's a little bit inconvenient, uh, it's the only way that I can make it work. Otherwise, it's just me like kind of like waving at them. So uh, right now, I'm waiting for my friend Rebecca and uh, she's gonna help me out with my Skype call today. It's tragic, but it's also really hilarious to me. Uh, I cacao with my like biological dad, and we can't talk to each other because he just sends me like things in Korean. I can translate it, but I still have no idea what he's really saying to me. And so like he'll send me like photos, and then I'll send him like an emoji of like a duck with a thumbs up. And then ever since the documentary ended, my brother has been learning a lot more English. He actually moved to Australia about a year ago, and so he's out there studying abroad. He's probably gonna live there for a little while, and so his English has dramatically improved. And communicating with him on this trip has been a lot of him ex trying to express himself and tell me things. I think that's really the number one reason why he's learning English, is so that I can have a relationship with our biological mom and dad through him. So that really means a lot. So three years after the last trip to Korea, I had an opportunity to go back again. And then also there was another ICA conference, the International Korean Adoptee Association, where they brought together all of these Korean adoptees from all around the world to be able to meet and kind of learn more about their identity. Today's the day. I'm on my way to the airport where I'm going to be leaving in about three hours as long as I get there in time. And then I get to Seoul, and then my brother's gonna pick me up, and then I'm gonna spend a couple of days with him, and then finally we're gonna go down, see my biological family, and then my mom is going to meet my biological mom. My name is Lynn Matthews, and I'm from Camarillo, California. My husband and I adopted Dan when he was eight months old. I think adoption really changed everything for the better for me. I can't imagine living life without my children. <laughs> they, they are everything to me. Three years ago, Dan was able to reconnect with his biological family. This time, I was gonna get the opportunity to come and meet them also. 
So I'm down at Gojido right now. It's been about three or four days, and I'm about an hour away before my mom gets here. So we're gonna go pick her up from the train station. She'll be here soon. We're gonna have dinner, and then we'll introduce everybody. It'll be a very delightful moment. I can't wait. I was excited and nervous about meeting them. I had a, a lot of worries and concerns that maybe our communication might hurt us from understanding each other. As we started walking up the stairs and then getting into the elevator, that's when I, my heart started beating a little bit. But like, I was excited in multiple ways. I was, I was scared. So we get up the elevator and then we open up the door and then my mom walks in a little bit and then she sees my biological mom and then you could tell that she was getting really, really choked up. The mother and I immediately went to a hug. Then the mom just started sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and everyone in the room was in tears. It kind of reassured me that we didn't really have a language barrier because the love that she expressed, it was just palpable. And from then on, it was just like we were friends. It was a very hard feeling to describe in words. So while I see them interacting, like it's, it's just really sweet. They held hands and like interlocked arms. And I'd talked to like other adoptees that had had their mothers meet. And they'd mentioned the same thing, that the mothers like just want to like hold each other or like be next to each other. And so that was a really, really like nice moment. I knew from talking to Dan about the first experience with his mom when they met in the agency that she had broken down and was crying and sobbing. So I was a little surprised that she seemed to have that same emotion for meeting me. She was just so warm and so caring and it was evident that she wanted us to feel comfortable in her home. She really appreciated me and thanked me for raising Dan in such a way that he would be open to meeting her. I really felt like she understood that we really thought of her as family. I knew going into it that I, one of the feelings that I wanted to express to her was that it was okay for us to share Dan because I had this feeling that, that if we shared the bond that we had with him, it would make our bond even closer and I felt that the love that we had just kind of exponentially increased because of that bond. So that made me feel better. There were times when I felt a little bit awkward, like I was kind of like in the way of them. When they took some pictures, they would just have Dan in the picture and I wouldn't be in it. But then they always, at the second picture, they would always pull me and make me go in the picture too. So. I think they didn't want me to feel left out. Through this whole experience, there was one particular moment that really stood out to me that like made me really sad. We were walking around the next day with my biological mom and mom, and we were walking down these stairs. I was like, Mom, are you having a good time? And then she's like, yeah, no, I'm in a really good time. I hope that you're gonna remember this because this might be one of the last times that we are together like this. And then it, like, it made me really think about like, yeah, I shouldn't be trying to rush any of this. Like, maybe this is the only time that they ever meet. I, I made sure to like grab them both at the same time as much as I could. Through this entire process of meeting my biological family, going to the conference, putting out the documentary, it's kind of left one question stuck in my head. How many other untold adoptee stories are there? I got really into drugs and a variety of other things. I think my family will tell you that nobody thought I would live to be 30. Growing up in a Jewish household, for me, it just added a whole nother layer to being unique and being different. When I came out to them, it didn't really go well. That just kind of started the chain of events that led to us not having a relationship now. Spending the week surrounded by Koreans was an amazing experience. Just to like be able to look at people and not feel like I'm sticking out. I don't feel like I connected with people on a different level. This is an intersection of five unique personalities and stories and the way that they intertwine during an unforgettable summer in Seoul.
Piercing through my skin In and out my soul Just like a mystery Tell me what's underneath I just won't figure like the shape of your silhouette Hey NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.